Hi, my name's Mick Moylan. I'm the Chemistry Outreach Fellow at the University of Melbourne. I'm here today at Whittington Flame Fest for Free Range Science, and we're going to go through the science, particularly the chemistry, of chocolate making. Step one of chocolate making is fermentation and in this step we go from the fruit of coca trees. These trees grow around the equator, so Ecuador, Brazil, Indonesia, Kenya and in this first step we cut open the coca pods which are the fruit of these trees, spread the insides out onto mats and inside these coca pods there's pulp and there's seeds Yeast and bacteria get into the pulp and the seeds and they make two very important things. They make acetic acid, which is the sour thing inside vinegar. They make lactic acid, which is the sour thing in milk. And after that, the seeds get taken, they get put into bags, they get dried out, and then they get sent off to factories, which are the place where the chocolate gets made. When we roast chocolate, we take the seeds, we put them in an oven at pretty mild conditions, so about 45 minutes, about 120, 130 degrees. And in this process, there's some really interesting and really delicious chemistry that happens. We're making a whole lot of different brown colored molecules. And these brown colored molecules give chocolate particularly its delicious smell. So these brown colored molecules, they come from bits of carbohydrates and bits of proteins. These things react together and make a whole lot of brown molecules that have very strong smells. These things, you can smell them from across the block, across the street no trouble at all and they are delicious. So roasting changes the chemicals from generally from very big long molecules to small brown and really tasty and smelly ones. Inside here we've got nibs and the nibs are made from the seeds. The nibs will be crushed and pressed. We get two things from these nibs cocoa butter which is used in cosmetics and cocoa powder which is the stuff you find in the supermarket that you make cakes from. So if I give this handle a turn, the turning the handle presses the nibs up against the end of this press and as I wind away here we start to get those two things coming out of the press out of these nibs. This is Chloe. Chloe's a chemist and a very keen chocolate maker. And Chloe's just been making some chocolate sculptures. But before that, you tempered your chocolate. How did you temper the chocolate? I did. So I melted my chocolate to about 50 degrees until it was all nice and runny. I then got my basin of chocolate and I tipped it out over this marble slab. Now, when you move it around over the marble slab, it slowly cools it down. Now as you slowly cool it, the bits and pieces in chocolate, see if they can fit together. If they do fit together, they stay together, but it's not quite right. As you move it round, it will retry until it finally gets into a nice position where the molecules all line up. So why do you have to temper chocolate? When you don't temper chocolate, it doesn't set properly. So tempered chocolate helps to spread all the molecules out it also gives a really nice shine. So I'd like to introduce Kieran, who really likes eating chocolate. Um, do you like the, the dark or the white the best? The dark, definitely. Oh, that's excellent because <laughs> dark chocolate is much better for you than white chocolate. White chocolate is just sugar and cocoa butter with some milk solids, but lots of fat. But dark chocolate has actually some useful things in it. So it has antioxidants, which are good for your heart, good for your brain, good for your circulation, and they have some, possibly some useful anti-cancer properties as well. But dark chocolate also has lots more of the chemicals in it that give you a bit of a pep. So K2, 
caffeine and particularly theobromine, which is delicious, a little bit of a stimulant and uh, gives you that delicious chocolate feeling after you've had some. So there you go. Are you telling me that I should eat lots of this? Maybe just one or two pieces a day. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be eating lots and lots and lots of it though.